Hey, welcome to Half the Battle. You know, talking about the Crimson Guard was so nice, I just have to do it twice. Today, we're taking a look at the Crimson Guard Immortal. This figure was released in 1991 with all original body parts. And like last time, I've got very little to critique here. I really like this figure too. It certainly is a departure from the original Crimson Guard, but not a radical one. While the first one had a dress uniform, the Immortal looks more ready for a fight, though he still looks regal, albeit in a different way. This figure definitely has samurai influences in its design. The detailing is great, of course. While he doesn't have a large Cobra logo, he does have three tiny ones. One on the helmet, one on his belt, and a small yet highly detailed one as a patch for his unit. It's impressively done. His accessories are a bit of a letdown. He comes with two flimsy looking missile launchers, one doubles as a machine gun, an ammo belt, missiles, and a backpack. The weapons just look cheap and off-putting, more of a gimmick than anything else. I will say the backpack is neat, storing three missiles. If only they came with a better looking launcher. And that was the only toy the Immortal got in the original line. In the United States, anyway. Internationally, things got a bit more interesting. There was a Fun School version. A Fun School is an Indian company that made some pretty neat variants of G.I. Joe figures for their market. And the Immortal is probably the best of the lot. It's actually more detailed than the domestic version, with two colors being used for the dagger on his leg, as well as the pouch on his other leg. The exception is the Cobra logo belt buckle, which doesn't get his own color here. The figure is a slightly darker shade of red, but the main difference is the golden paint on the top of the helmet. It adds a bit of regality, if you ask me, Though, I'd fault no one for thinking it looks silly. The second variant comes from Europe, and it's a bit of a strange one. Oh, we did get an identical version to the US one, but somewhere down the line, there was a running change in production. For some reason, a few of the figures had their heads replaced with that of a Rock Viper. You'll note the Rock Viper doesn't have a full face mask, his mouth is exposed. Didn't stop them from just painting that section black and calling it good. It's actually a decent approximation of the original head, but the question has to be asked. Why? Why would they do this? You don't just make a non sequitur change on a whim. There's no added value in it. No, they'd only replace the mold if they had to, which I think is what's happened. The first thing you have to understand is, Europe didn't get the toys at the same time as America. Sometimes it could take up to a full year for them to show up here. The factories would first churn out a wave of toys for the American market, and only later produce a batch for Europe. I believe somewhere down the line, Hasbro needed the head mold for another project, so it was yanked from the Euro production line. And I think I found what it was. They needed it for the Name Your Own Cobra toy from 1993, resulting in the Rock Viper head being used for the last few European Immortals. I'll talk about one more toy the Immortal got in 2003. Oh god damn it. Why do they freaking keep doing this? It's called a Crimson Guard. Crimson. Even in India, where they got pretty wild with color sometimes, they understood this. Why would you make him blue? And no, once again, the lip service we got by them painting the bottom half of his face red doesn't count. Putting that aside, it is a great figure in its own right. They just should have called it literally anything else. This guy came with the cat too. A repainted Mobat tank, which is pretty cool. Oh, and just for completeness sake, yes, there was another figure made just last year. But it's a collector's club exclusive, and I don't have it. 
from looking at pictures online, it doesn't really seem to hold a candle to the original. And those were the toys. Three excellent figures, but the first one is the best. With that, let's talk about the character, starting with the file card. Firstly, there's obviously the name. It was clearly inspired by the Persian Immortals. These were elite troops that both served on the battlefield and as an imperial guard for the Persian Emperor. So, like with the Crimson Guard and the Praetorians, Hasbro took their cue from ancient history once again. I may have been a bit hasty when I said the look was inspired by the samurai. It may be based of what Hasbro thought Persian armor looks like. You know what's funny? According to Wikipedia, Immortals is actually a mistranslation. The Persians never called them that. Going by the original Persian name, they were called Companions. Though even that seems like a literal interpretation. And I assume the original meaning was just guards, as in Imperial Guards. Still, Imperial Companions sounds less like an elite fighting force and more like an escort service. So I wonder if the Persians heard about the mistranslation and just went with it, agreeing it sounded way cooler. There are similarities between the Immortals file card and the one from the original Crimson Guard, but also differences. For one thing, Immortals are all vehicle drivers, which is of course why they were sold on card and not with any vehicle. LOGIC! I know I've harped on the blue guy, but at least he came with a vehicle. The card says they are qualified to operate all Cobra land and air vehicles, but they make special mention of the Hurricane and the Hammerhead. The Hammerhead, which is an underwater tank, so not a land or air vehicle. Similar to the original CG, these guys are fanatically loyal to Cobra Commander and are used as undercover operatives. And yes, they are still lawyers or accountants, but these guys are accountants that pump iron. I... I guess I spoke too soon when I said we hit peak IRS in my last review, cause this guy might as well literally be Erwin R. Scheister. The last thing to mention is the card refers to them as super soldiers. It's meant more as they are the elite of the elite instead of in the Captain America sense, I think. The only thing the other file cards add is from the second one. They consider their tanks to be recreational vehicles. That's the file card trying too hard to sound cool, if you ask me. There's no comic section this time, since I couldn't find any evidence they appeared in the original run. The internet wasn't very helpful here, since most wikis just lob the immortals in with a regular crimson card. It's possible they show up in the background somewhere, but I'm not reading a hundred issues to find out. That just leaves us with the cartoon series, specifically Deke. There are two appearances I can talk about. First, in the double episode, The Sludge Factor, a PSA about polluting the environment I've already reviewed, where one shows up as a sort of sidekick to Cobra Commander. He isn't very distinct. The Immortal is most prominently featured in another two-part episode, The Greatest Evil. In this case, it's a named character. Well, named in as much as he is referred to as Crimson Guard number one. And he is one of the main characters of the story. Crazy Joes. Attention, Crimson Guard number one. Crimson Guard number one here. Yeah, Deke never referred to them as immortals, so you could see him as the leader of the Crimson Guards or something. Anyway, in the story, Crimson Guard number one has a sister who's become addicted to drugs, so he convinces both Duke and Cobra Commander to team up and take on the evil drug lord who got her hooked on the stuff. That's right, it's another PSA episode. This time on the dangers of drugs. Because drugs are bad, okay? It, uh, it's not a very good episode. And its day will come one day on this show.
If there's one thing to take away from that story though, it's that number one does genuinely seem to care about his sister and wants her to get better. It's a nice touch. And that was the Crimson Guard Immortal. But a question still needs answering. Is this a separate character, or should they just be lumped in with the Crimson Guard? Well, considering they wear armor, and later became vehicle experts, I'd say yes, they are their unique subset. In conclusion, the first toy is the best, and the only character we saw, Crimson Guard number one, was decent, though he appears in a horrible episode. See you next time, everybody, and before I forget, happy 150th episode!